Hey guys, Mike here. Um, I'm gonna do videos from now, every so often, uh, from the phone instead of from the, the crummy webcam upstairs in the office. Office is kind of dark. This gives us a little bit more availability for like, you know, different environments. Anyways, so I got an email from a client basically asking, how do you get your clients to invest the money necessary to buy the proper security for whatever the business is and, you know, basically get people to care about cybersecurity before the breach happens. Because let's face it, time and time again, the moment something happens, all of a sudden organizations want to dump tons and tons of money into it because the issues already occurred. Um, so how do we do it in a manner to where we're ahead of the curve? And one of the things that you have to really think about is um, engineers, firewall engineers, network architects, things like that. We tend to get very specific in our, our method of thought, right? We want to block all the threats. We need more money to do so because we need the next shiny toy that will enable us to do that. And what it really drills down to is that risk is not a technical issue. It's not an IT issue. So, you know, all you firewall engineers or network architects that are sitting here bashing your head into the wall thinking, I got to be able to mitigate this risk, that risk, everything else. You just need to hold on, slow down, and think this through. Risk is a business decision, a business question, something that the organization chooses, not the engineers. And what I mean by that is obviously we want to have a firewall everywhere. We want micro segmentation. We want whatever we can from a technical standpoint that will secure our border or our infrastructure and shrink our attack surface, right? But you don't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars mitigating a $10,000 risk. So that's why one of the biggest things that people really need to work with or understand is that it's up to leadership to determine what risk is acceptable, what risk, you know, you can just accept and say, if it happens, it happens. What risk should we mitigate? You know, spend the money, buy the new firewall, change the configuration, etc. And what risk should we defer to maybe a cybersecurity insurance company or to some other organization, if that's even deferrable. So um, stop bashing your heads into the wall. It's not your problem. It's a business decision. Uh, I know how frustrating it is because you can see things here and there and you're like, God, I just really wish I had the money to be able to fix this. I wish I had the budget. I wish I had the people, the time. And at the end of the day, if you raise concerns about the various risks that are available in the environment and your leadership has gone through the proper risk management process, they've looked at their security program and said it just doesn't fit within our parameters, then you've done all you can. Obviously, you want to keep an email saying that you've proven that you've shown them this, right? Um, but yeah, stop. Stop stressing out over stuff that you can't control. Because while it's, it might not be an acceptable risk to you, to the organization, it may be. And I know that's kind of a, a backwards way of looking at it. But it's the world we live in right now. And ultimately, executive leadership is the ones that are going to be uh, subject to any fallback because of that, right? So um, we're going to start doing videos talking about cybersecurity in general. Uh, there's going to be a playlist specific to non-Fortinet specific things. Um, because obviously... Fortinet firewall or a Fortinet AP or a Fortinet switch or whatever. That's just a technical control. That is a piece of the puzzle that enables you to do your job, which is what I like to help with. But what I've noticed is a lot of people are missing the big picture. There are things outside of the technical controls that people really need to consider in order for their environments to be put up to best practice. So... Um, hopefully this specific playlist and this series of videos will be helpful. Um, it's more 
broad stroke big picture versus this is how you configure a Ford switch, this is how you configure an AP, radius authentication, things like that. This is more of the why. Why does your organization need an access point that has LDAP authentication? Well, because it's tied into what they need, right? It's listed based on their security requirements. Otherwise, you'd have Wi-Fi wi that has no password. So, um, these videos will be more rapid fire. Uh, it's just going to be the nature of them. They're not going to have any of my branding on them. Though I will be wearing my uh, If Fortinet support was good, I'd be broke shirts. Because, you know, I'm just trying to drill home the, the idea there. So, anyways, arm's getting tired. So, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, we'll focus more on, you know, how to assess risk, risk management framework, things like that and uh, how to apply it to the technical controls that you guys learn how to configure from me anyways. So until next time, y'all have a good day and keep on keeping on. Thanks.